Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Joni Young and today I'm gonna to show you how to paint this Stingray underwater landscape using acrylic paint, so stay tuned. So today we're gonna to be working on a 25 or 20 by 24 canvas I primed with black paint. We're gonna be using a large blending brush and cerulean blue, turquoise, and titanium white. I'm going to begin by just wetting my brush a little bit and then picking up quite a bit of the blue paint and I'm going to start on an angle pulling my brush diagonal lines starting from the left side now I want to pick up some turquoise and I'm not washing my brush off so I'm going to start adding this over top of part of the blue and more towards the center of the canvas. I'll then pick up titanium white again with a dirty brush and I'm going to start adding that again partially on the turquoise and then on the rest of the canvas. It's going to be lighter and lighter as it gets up towards the top right corner. Grabbing some more of my titanium white, I'm going to start to pull and create some soft sun rays before we add all the other layers, building it up to a really nice bright sun in the top corner. We want to get a really soft blended look first and have it like gradually get lighter and lighter. And now with the canvas still wet and my brush still wet, I've got a little bit of white paint on there and I'm just going to go in the opposite direction, making it look blurry and wavy like. So this really gives it that underwater look. I'm going to create a little pattern kind of uh, looping around with my brush and scumbling along the bottom here for uh, the sand. And this goes up on an angle too. It's kind of on a diagonal angle. I really like the perspective of this um, scene that we're doing today. I think it's really neat and it's really, really fun. I've never painted stingrays before, so thank you so much to my patron for requesting this today. I'm going to start making it a little bit lighter right down here at the bottom, just with my turquoise and white. And now, after washing that off, I'm going to take my filbert brush, push into a little bit of turquoise, but mostly white, so I'm just tinting my white with turquoise. And I'm going to start making a messy, random little pattern here of lots of loopy little lines, outlines. This is just all those highlights and shadows uh, just reflecting on the bottom of the ocean. So the ones that are closest to us at the bottom of the canvas are going to be larger. And then we're going to make them smaller and skinnier and closer together as they get to make them look like they're farther away. I'm just gonna keep building these up, scumbling and blending out some of them to make softer tones. And I'm picking up a little bit of that blue and turquoise as well and kind of scumbling it around and dragging it and blending it with my brush too so I get all these different light pastel tones of all the same colors. And then where I'm gonna want it to be the brightest, I'll be using just straight white. Now later on, I'm gonna be adding and incorporating a little bit of my neon yellow cool, but you'll see that a little bit later on in the process. I'm gonna soften and lighten the base again here, just right above the uh, floor of the ocean. And then come in with a little bit more blue, kind of just building up the layers and the depth one um, color and brush stroke at a time. So it's really important to take your time with this, guys, if you want to have that uh, 3D effect. And the reason why I'm working on a black canvas is because it really, really helps to um, create the depth in a painting where you have a lot of shadow and you want something to look really dramatic. A black canvas is really great for that. So on an angle, just pulling and wiggling my brush around, not thinking too much about it. You just need that light, and, that light and shadow and skinny little lines. You can make them as loopy as you want. 
Um, it's up to you. You can make them a little bit edgier looking. It's all going to look really good when you're all done. Don't worry too, too much about it though, guys. So now I'm coming in with a fresh coat of cerulean blue in between some of the sun rays, again, building up the color and the depth. Now I'm going to incorporate my light blue violet or light ultramarine blue. They go by uh, both names or this color goes by both names. And I'm using a filbert brush. I'm going to just kind of push and pull like I'm making flower petals almost. And they almost kind of, the shapes that I'm making here kind of almost look like a little fish. They look like a little school of fish, but what it is is the movement in the water. So there's kind of ripples up there and it's kind of going to start to scoop down and around and go up again uh, towards the right hand side. So it starts on the upper left side and then it scoops down. So just keep on following that pattern and make these little, you can just make like ovals, lots of ovals, different sizes with sort of rounded pointy ends or you can make them really pointy if you want. You can make them rounder or pointier. So that blue violet as the base and then cerulean blue around the outside. And then for some of them to look a little bit brighter, I add white inside. So I'll be taking the blue violet right here with some white. So you want them to be all different tones just to make it all different. So the light is reflecting on all that ripples in the water differently creating all those different tones this is really going to bring some life and atmosphere to your painting so i'll continue doing this going almost all the way up to the top but i'm not going to make it too bright at the top yet because i want to come in with my titanium white later on for my sun rays so this has to be all these ripples have to be a little bit darker than what our sun rays are going to be otherwise it's all just going to get lost and you won't uh, see any different variations of those colors and patterns so what I really like about the light ultramarine blue um, in this painting is that it is very complementary to the turquoise and it also looks really nice with a cerulean blue. Now if you don't have cerulean blue you can use thalo blue. Uh, you could also use prussian blue. Um, cobalt blue or ultramarine blue would be nice as well. That's just the the main base of the light blue violet I'm using here. But I like these three colors together because they're all uh, so different, but very complementary together. And of course, I'll be adding that neon yellow a little bit later on that looks nice as well. Okay, I'm just going to work on my highlights here a little bit more. Now I have a few underwater paintings. If you guys are interested in learning how to paint more underwater scenes, I've got a couple, not a whole lot. Um, there, there's one that's just all underwater. There's no fish or um, coral or anything like that. It's just the patterns of the water. It's really pretty and that's a full length uh, quite long tutorial and I'll leave a link um, for that. That'll be in my underwater seascapes. And then I've got a few other ones that are more fantasy based. It's got like um, castles and ruins and stuff like that. So there's a little bit more going on. There's one that's got like a, a sunken ship and treasure chest. Um, so keep that in mind. There's a few different ones, different options for you guys. So you can see I've kind of wiggled out a few little lines as well. So they're skinnier. It's kind of like when you're painting clouds in your sky, you want to have different sizes and, and for that perspective, you want to make some of them start to look like they're just little lines, kind of getting lost in the rest of the background. So it's the same sort of uh, technique and rule. I'm going to soften this area up a little bit more with just some turquoise and white. So I'm just going to come around now with a very thin layer of uh, cerulean blue and a little bit of water. So that's how I thin it out. I uh, just want to make sure that these patterns are standing out against the base color that we have. So I want to make sure that they're outlined a little bit. We've got lots of light and dark and mid-tones going on. And then we'll begin our next step.
All right, so I'm ready to start adding my Neon Yellow Cool. This is Luminous Neon Yellow by Holbein. I've got my angle brush here, and I'm gonna mix uh, white with my yellow, pick up a little bit of Cerulean Blue, and I'm gonna make a cooler looking turquoise. This is gonna be a little bit more yellowy than the other turquoise that I was using at first. I want this to be a little bit brighter, and I'm just going to on an angle <laughs> so I chose the ankle brush it's very easy to uh, fit in here and pull and flick up from the bottom for some more sun rays and light here at the base and then I'll be incorporating um, I'll be blending that around in the water and then a little bit for reflections down here at the base on the sand And to soften it, the paint underneath is pretty much all dry now, so I need to use a little tiny bit of water. Uh, you definitely don't want a lot of water. If it's dripping on your canvas, you know you've got too much. So just enough water to thin the paint out slightly so that I can blend it and it doesn't look really, really dry. So I'm going to take some more blue now and less yellow, take a little bit of white, and I'm going to start um, adding a little bit more color here, building up the saturation slightly, and I just want it to look a little bit creamier and softer and, and uh, more blended. So I'll do this for a little bit, and then I'm going to really brighten up the reflections on the, the bottom of the ocean on the sand by adding more thin lines of white so you'll see here i'm just going to take white with yellow and then sort of just cut into it so i've got a nice thin line and the bristles are all nice and tight together on the end of my brush And I'm going to add a little hint of this light yellow in and around the pattern. And then I'm going to begin adding my sun rays. So just a little wiggle, scumble around, sliding my brush very freely and loosely. Remember, it's all about creating those mid-tones and different lights, some brighter, some softer. So coming from the top right corner, applying the most of the paint right on the corner and then I'm going to pull off from that in all directions so we have a really beautiful sunburst starburst effect here so bright bright on the top right and I'm going to be going over that a few times to build up uh, that brightness there layering over because I'm using that to pull off of pull off from right now so I place the white paint there and then I just use it and keep pulling and flicking so I'm kind of taking it off each time, right? Until it's all dry. So I'll just keep doing this, building up so many layers, pulling and flicking. You can use, if you don't have an angle brush, uh, flat brush works. I use flat brushes quite often for my sun rays. And then if it's too dry and it's not uh, looking soft enough, if it's looking a little too patchy, um, like sometimes you can see the little uh, pattern of the canvas showing through. Um, then you just need to add a little bit of water to your brush like we did earlier with the, the patterns. So here is another layer of white. I want to make sure that I have some skinnier, brighter lines that are closer to the top right. And then they get wider 
and a little bit duller as they go down to into the depths, right? And closer to the bottom of the ocean here. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna add some more light in the water. When working on a black canvas, uh, you might need to go back a few times to add your highlights and acrylic paint does dry darker so just have patience take your time and just know don't get frustrated just know that that's normal and that's part of the process guys so I'm going to take my yellow and my blue again and add another layer of color in here I want to have a little bit more of a green um, so we everything all the colors tie together so we've got the blue to the turquoise and green um, matching the highlights and the shadows at the bottom and then we've got that beautiful light blue violet um, in there as well and I've got little hints of that down on the bottom as well in the shadows I'll be incorporating um, that color into my stingrays as well that light blue violet and we'll be using white and just a little bit of black Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of black now and I'm going to start making a shadow color. A little bit of water on my brush. I've got my angle brush still. So blue, black, and light blue violet. I'm going to work on a few areas here. One is going to be look like a big blob and you guys are probably going to be like, why is she doing that? She's wrecking all those highlights. This is very, very important. This is our shadow, our main shadow from the stingray that's the closest to the bottom, to the floor here. So you do need to have this here, and I know it can be a little bit frustrating and hard to go over uh, when you've worked so hard on something, but don't leave this out, guys. It really makes a difference in this painting, and it makes it look real. So I'm going to just go in and around wherever I want here and add a few more little shadows, but nothing as big as that one. But we've got another one that's a little bit smaller than that well quite a bit smaller than that but it's going to be uh, the shadow of the other stingray that's above that one and kind of off more towards the left side but it's not as big the biggest one is going to be right here so we'll just continue to add little hints and lines and wiggles of that dark color all around here and then we'll begin our next step Okay, so it's time to start painting our first stingray and I'm using my small filbert brush. I made a light gray color just with a little bit of black and some white 
and it's pretty easy. It looks like sort of a scroll. It goes up, down, up, and then down again. And then we're just going to fill it in here with a little bit more white, creating a few different tones to it. And we'll add a few little shadows here and there. And I'm going to adjust the shape a little bit because I ended up making it a little bit too wide or too thick. So you'll see how easy it is for you to scumble off a little bit of paint in areas that you might need to. And then I'm taking my black on the tip of my brush and I'm going to go from each side and apply that paint, pull and kind of just swirl. I actually really had fun painting these stingrays. I, I'm not a, a fan of stingrays. They kind of scare me, but painting them, if they're kind of swirly looking and I like to paint anything that has a lot of flow and swirls to it. So I enjoyed painting these and I think you guys are really going to find this a lot easier than um, you'd expect. So I hope you guys really give this a try and uh, you know, don't be um, afraid to share it on our Facebook group. We're a supportive bunch over there and uh, everybody loves to see everyone's work and support one another. So I hope you guys share this one. And uh, I'm just adding a little bit of white in here, creating um, dark gray, outlining in black, and then uh, little fins or whatever they are on the end there and we don't see the tail right but we will see the tail of the next stingray that we add so right here i'm just going to scumble off a little bit of that paint i'm going to bring this up making a little bit skinnier a little bit narrower very easy to do the only thing you don't want to do you want to be careful that you don't scrub too hard or you might take the underneath of layers of paint off which are all the blues and turquoises and the the sun rays but you could avoid this if you just make yours <laughs> a little bit narrower than i did so i'm going to come in now with a little bit of white on the very tip of my brush pull just above where we're going to have that black line and then make a light gray inside on the top I'm going to just narrow this down a little bit, pulling off some of that paint. So you want to have a point on either side. It goes up and then scoops down and then goes up again. So I'll just reshape this a little bit with my dark gray. I'm going to take some white and come right in and kind of curve over curve down and a little bit underneath we want to make that um, a little bit darker than what it is so I'm just going to come here and just add these little little fins or whatever they are and of course we don't see that tail I think I mentioned that earlier but with the next stingray we paint we will see the tail I'm just going to add a little bit of a shadow in here I'll blend that out I added just a little bit of dark gray so I'm just going to soften that. So the idea is the color of the body here on the, the bottom, the belly of the stingray, it's not going to be bright white, but it's not going to be super dark either. So you might uh, be safe to just use a uh, light gray. That would probably work the best. And keep your highlights nice and bright. And we'll have a few areas where it's just going to be really just straight black. And by doing that, keeping your highlights really bright and your shadows really dark, it's going to make this look like a, a realistic 3D image that's going to stand out uh, from the water and everything. And it's a really, really important process to not skip any of these steps, guys. Just take your time. Now I'm probably just being a little bit picky here, but I'm gonna take this off and make this a little bit softer and a little bit narrower as well. You don't have to do that. You can leave it as it is. If you're painting along with me, just leave it. I'm just being a little bit picky today. Um, so I'm gonna come in and do this again, just with light gray. And then I'm gonna add the little um, fins again. 
um, just with gray and then a little bit of white. I don't want to make them too, too dark because um, they are kind of behind, well, they are behind the, they're at the other end of the stingray, so they wouldn't be really, really dark, um, unlike the shadows that are closer to us on either side. So just coming in with a tiny two little flicks of white right there. And then I'm going to add a little bit more white in here, softening some of that black up. I'm going to be using a little tiny liner brush for um, the mouth, I guess the face. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I don't know um, a lot about stingrays, but to me, the underneath part of the stingray, it looks like a face. It looks like eyes and a mouth, so I'm just going to call it that. You guys can comment below if I'm way off. <laughs> and uh, soften this a little bit, making it a little bit darker slowly blending into the rest of the the white or light gray that we've got there and then like i said i'm going to use a micro mini brush for the pattern on the bottom or the face Okay, so we're all finished with that guy. Now we're gonna start with the other one up here and the shape's gonna be a little bit different. And um, we're gonna see the tail on this one. So it is gonna be a little bit different, but same colors and same technique and the same brushes I'm using. So we're gonna do this belly uh, gray, a light gray again. We're gonna outline in black. And I'm even adding a little bit of my light blue violet right here. I'll be adding a little bit more white and just follow along as best as you guys can. You guys got this. I know you're doing a wonderful job. Keep going and don't give up. And if you need a little bit of, of a break, you know, just take a break sometimes. That's all you need and come right back to it. Um, working on something that is takes you out of your comfort zone is really good for you to grow as an artist. So up here, I'm just coming along the top with some black, letting it blend into the white that's on my brush. And I'm just going to outline, come around, there's the tail, very skinny, and it's just a little arch or a curve there. Now I'm going to um, reshape this tail a little bit, and around the back end here, um, I'm going to make it a little bit narrower and add a little bit more black. We'll start on up above, two little black dots. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of white without washing my brush, start from that little dot and pull a line both ways, left and right diagonally, and then a little bit kind of coming down to the center, meeting at the top and front of the stingray's face or mouth. <laughs> Add a little bit more white. I'm going to really brighten it up here so it may take a few tries to get it nice and bright. If you want to take time to dry your painting off first, you can. Uh, it's not really necessary though. You can just reload your brush and without using too much pressure, you can apply those um, highlights and shadows and layers quite easily. So I'm just going to take a little bit of black here and start to blend it in a little bit to the belly and then work on a few of the areas back here, just kind of reshaping a little bit. Coming around that corner with a little bit of black. So I'll let you guys watch the rest of me painting this stingray. I'm just going to work on the same details as the first one, doing the same thing, and then I'll meet you back here for the next step. We're going to be using a really cool uh, brush, so stay tuned for that.
Okay, so we're all finished our stingrays, almost done this painting. I'm gonna come back over here and add the finishing touches to the sun rays with my filbert brush here. And now I'm switching over to my even tail wisp fan brush. I got a lot of water on it first and pulling it in, loading it into the white, I'm gonna just ripple around in the water, creating all these neat lines and patterns for all the reflective light. This is one of the neatest brushes that I've come across and I highly recommend them. I got mine at Michael's in Canada, so you can definitely find them in Michael's in Canada. I'm sure they have them in the States as well. And I know they have them online on Amazon because I, I checked. So just type in um, Wisp Even Tail Fan Brush. I also found a filbert brush like this that works really well. Um, for painting palm trees and whatever else you can think of using it for patterns anything that needs patterns I find these brushes are really handy and so much fun so I will have a list of all the colors and brushes that I'm using in the description below this video thank you so much for joining me you guys today this was a really fun one and I definitely stepped out of my comfort zone because like I said I've never painted stingrays before I hope you guys give this a try share it on the Facebook group and I'll see you guys soon in another video bye for now